How are you today? I'm very good. How are you? Actually in New Orleans. Good. How's the tour going? Really well, actually. Very good. You're nearing your 30th year. Coming up, yeah. Do you have any big events planned? Not much. I think uh, 30 is not such a you know stellar anniversary as like let's say 50 or 100, but or 25 for that matter. But uh, right. there's a bunch of releases, um, old stuff that has never been put out on vinyl. It's going to come out. It's going to be a new album, a tour, the usual stuff. Great. And I want to talk about the beginning of your band. So it started because of a very interesting art project. Yep. How did that project happen? I have no idea. I was not really involved with the, the happening. I was just basically hired as a driver because all those guys that were doing the uh, sculpting and painting, they were like heavy alcoholics and they needed a, someone to make sure they got to Paris. Mm -hmm. So they asked me to drive them and I did. And then somehow on the drive it came up like, uh, it would be nice to do some audio. Is there anything you can do? And I was like, I can make some noise. Right. And that's how it started. Mm. So you were involved with music before that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, were you in bands? And what did those bands sound like? I played in bands. I played the bass. And um, they were like, you know, punk rock bands, like kind of playing in like small youth centers, you know, or like a case of beer or something like that. Mm. Did industrial exist at that time? Oh yeah, industrial was um, definitely around and I was a huge fan of uh, early industrial stuff, SPK and Robin Crystal and stuff. Mm. But I, I had no ambitions to really, um, you know, do anything with music. I was more like a working as a photographer as a day job and I was working in a publishing company so this whole band stuff was kind of on the side it was, wasn't very important right and it became important I guess yes it did it did um, once I discovered the, the ins and out of recording studios I was like I was hooked because I'm, I'm a very uh, tactile person so when I walk in a room with like 10,000 knobs I'm like yes what does this do? What does that do? And that's how I learned it. Okay. So industrial seemed to peak in the 90s, but now it seems like all those really great 80s and 90s industrial bands are getting really popular again. Have you noticed that as much? I don't know. I mean, KMFDM has never sort of slumped in that sense. We always put the, putting out records and touring and... Um, I'm just really um, surprised, in a, in a good way, surprised to see that our audience stays very young. You know, it's not like we're playing all of a sudden like 40 and older. Right. But there's, there's young people coming to the show, so I think that's a really good, that's a really good sign, and it's an important factor in KMFDM's longevity as well. Mm. And you said you've got uh, releases coming out on vinyl. Do you still like vinyl, or do you like just digital oh, I, music? I always loved vinyl. I always preferred the, the large format, especially with KMFDM's artwork. That's, you know, the perfect presentation of that kind of stuff. If you have to look at it on an iPod or something, you don't get that greatness, but if you carry a piece of vinyl, you're like, wow. Okay. Right. So, and um, vinyl has a huge resurgence. I mean, people are buying vinyl like this no tomorrow. Definitely. Is there anything else you'd like to say? I want to say thank you, Lawrence, for having us. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you.